sorry. I was just busy learning the ancient ways of the Ninjala. Wait. Have you come to challenge me? Finally, a worthy foe. I'm sure you'll regret ever approaching me for a fight. Huh. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Ninjala is a free-to-play online action game that was announced back in March during a Nintendo Direct Mini. My initial thoughts on the game back then were that it was cute, it gives me a lot of Splatoon vibes, I'm not sure why though. Apparently a lot of people agreed with me, in fact the main reason why this game garnered so much interest was that it looked so similar to Splatoon. At least that's why I decided to play it. Also, it's free. Now, I went into this game mostly blind. In fact, what you're seeing here is the first time I ever booted up the game. Yep, I finally got a capture card for this video, which was generously loaned to me by my friend Lazarus17, who was borrowing it from my other friend Tom. You may remember him from that time I ripped off playing Rock124 and destroyed an Android phone. In return, I promised to shout out their Discord server. So, here it is. I am in the server, but please don't spam me with pains. Now that that's out of the way, let's agree to some legal terms and watch an introduction video provided by the Ninjala YouTube channel. Yeah, this game allows you to open up YouTube in a browser-like format, which is just further proof that the Switch can handle a web browser, so where is it, Nintendo? After vaguely learning the mechanics of this game and choosing my ninja, I am sent to a training dojo where I can learn the controls. Instinctively, I turned on gyro-controlled aim for this game because I believe it is generally superior to analog sticks. However, I soon switched over to the inferior method because this game doesn't require the precision aiming that a shooter does and also I couldn't figure out how to reset the camera. After a quick Google search, I learned that you do so by pressing the left stick, but by the time I figured that out, I was already writing the script for this video. That's one of the biggest flaws with this game. It's not easy to get into. The developers obviously tried with the YouTube video and pop-up tutorials, but I felt like they didn't cover as much as they should have which left me to either experimenting or googling. Once I got the hang of the controls, I'm sent to my base, which is just a bunch of menus with no labels. I had to select each one of them to find out what they did. You know what, screw that, let's just enter a battle. Now, how this game works is that you and seven other people are put into an arena where everyone has to try to rack up as many points as possible. You can do so by either collecting these yellow thingies, smashing drones, or killing other people. Oh, I'm sorry, it pawning them. After another Google search, I learned that Ippon is the highest score a fighter can achieve in a Japanese martial arts Ippon Wutsuri contest, usually Kendo, Judo, Karate, or Jujitsu. They're really hitting home the ninja theme. Whoever gets the most Ippons or smashes the most drones by the end of the match gets bonus points, which often decide the game. When you kill a drone, your S energy gauge increases, which allows you to use your ninja gum. You see, every ninja in this game has their own ninja gum, which according to this game's lore, turns anyone who chews it into a kid. So it's quite possible that some of these ninjas are actually 30 year old men. Anyway, your ninja can use his or her gum to summon their weapon. There are four weapon types in this game, batons, drills, hammers, and yo-yos. The batons are your standard all-around weapons, drills allow you to stealthily hide in the ground, hammers are really strong but also really slow, and yo-yos have a long range, are really fast but very weak. If you smash enough drones, you can make your weapon bigger, which increases the amount of damage that it deals. Each weapon also has three specials, which you can pull off by holding down the ZL button and pressing either X, Y, or ZR. The specials for each weapon vary, but most of them have some sort of projectile or super move that absolutely demolishes any nearby enemies if they get too close. You can also run on walls, attack using the ZR button, dodge using the L button, charge using the R button, double jump by pressing B twice, slow your descent by holding down ZL to blow a gum bubble, and zoom through the air by pressing B twice while holding down CL. Whew, that was a lot to digest. I'm sure after learning all of that that the combat is going to be super complex and require mastery of all of those controls. Nope, it's just rock, paper, scissors. You see, when both you and your enemy engage in combat, you may parry each other's attack, which causes a prompt to pop up that asks you to move your left analog stick in one of three directions to attack. Basically, up beats down, down beats sideways, and sideways beats up. But none of this really matters because the game gives you no indication as to which direction your enemy has selected, which means you can do nothing but pick a direction and pray to God that your enemy does encounter it. And if they do, they can score multiple hits on you and usually net an Ippon. 
The parrying system is the worst part of this game. Unless you use one of your specials, roughly 90% of all encounters will have you at the mercy of this randomized system. And the part that really stains is the fact that this game asks you to learn so much about its mechanics only for them to be rendered meaningless in actual combat situations. Sure, specials can give you an upper hand, but those all have a cooldown, so if they're not charged up when you encounter an enemy, good luck. I would be more sour on this game had it not been free to play, or, god forbid, pay to win. There are microtransactions in this game, but they're purely cosmetic. Upon entering the shop, I'm told to ask my parents before I buy anything, or buy stuff with them. But what if I'm adopted? Ah, whatever, I'll just use the free stuff. The game gives you three emotes for victory and losing animations, and I'm happy to say that I can make my ninja sob when he wins. There's also a single player campaign, but you have to pay for that too, and it's $10 per chapter, and I'm not going down that rabbit hole. Yeah, I think I've played enough of this game to determine whether or not it's a Splatoon ripoff. It's not. Sure, both games have a fresh art style, but the similarities end there. Splatoon is much simpler to learn and does not rely on a luck-based combat system. Splatoon has unique game modes and characters, and its weapons are more shooter-based than close combat-based, with a few exceptions. I also feel like Splatoon has a better focus on what it is, that being an ink-based aquatic inhabited game. Apart from the ninja terms, Ninjala doesn't really have much of a focus, other than that it's about kids being kids. In a way, I feel like Ninjala is sort of like what Splatoon would have been had Nintendo not come up with the Inklings. And thank god someone over there was high enough to come up with the Inklings. So, did I have fun with Ninjala? Not really. But plenty of other people have. I'd still recommend it to anyone looking for a free-to-play online action game. Because it's free. Anyway, I think my ninja days are just about over. I learned a lot over my one week of playing Ninjala, and I think I'm finally ready to go back out into the real world and defend myself against any threat. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot.